Ben Motorcycle Adventures Podcast, your hub for everything off-road, dual sport, and adventure motorcycle. My name is John. I will be your host. This is episode number 15, Ben Motorcycle Adventures Podcast. Thank you for joining. Thank you for listening. And as always, thank you for reviewing and subscribing to this podcast that downloads the past couple of weeks through the roof. Um, Probably doesn't hurt that it it seems like I'm putting out a new podcast every couple of days, but credit to the listeners. Uh, It's a sign that we're putting out content that people like to listen to, and we're just going to keep the ball rolling. I've got some great guests coming up in the very near future, and tonight is no exception. We're going to talk to Jacob Michna again. Now, we talked to him, seems like a few weeks ago, but it's only been a few days ago. But we talked to Jacob about the National Hare and Hound Association and the 2019 series and, and all the things that surround that, but we'll talk to Jacob tonight about the 2019 Western Hair Scrambles series. A little bit of a a different uh, racing format. Um, These are more uh, shorter loop off-road type events, but uh, I'll I'll let Jacob explain all that to you guys. Uh, We'll get into that here in a second. All right, I'm a little bit guilty here. I'm kind of procrastinating. I'm finishing the, the recording for this and the publishing for this podcast just about an hour before it is set to release and you know I, I went out did some writing had some fun but uh, truth be told I was kind of waiting for uh, Jacob to have the opportunity to finalize his AMA West Hair Scramble schedule or series schedule for the year they just released it about four hours ago so your first round is at Hangtown January 19th and 20th then they go to Arizona Gorman California Shasta Dam New Round in Idaho, Bellingham, Washington, Stillwater, Oklahoma, and then Wilseyville, California uh, toward the end of November, right before Thanksgiving. You know what? I think I've got an idea. I'll go down to Wilseyville and then maybe ride the LA Barstow to Vegas. That could be a good trip. Now, I've seen a ton of YouTube videos on Wilseyville. The riding there looks way too good uh, to miss. So need to get down for that round. I don't know when Thanksgiving is this year. I'll take a look at that, but that could really work. Uh, drive down, race Wilsonville, swap over to the dual sport, and then hit the uh, LA bars to, to Vegas. Anyway, um, yeah, Jacob's here to talk to us about the West Hair Scramble series. That's at AMAWHS on Instagram and westhairscramble.com. Again, the series schedule, the finalized schedule, the eight rounds for 2019, that's all finalized. You can check that out on their Facebook page. Um, I think that'll do it. Let's talk to Jacob. Thanks for listening. All right, guys. Welcome back to another episode of the podcast. Again, Jacob Michin is joining us tonight, this time to talk the Western Hair Scramble series. That's westhairscramble.com, and you can find them on Instagram, at AMAWHS. Again, Jacob, thanks for joining us and talking to us now about the Western Hair Scramble series. Yeah, so... uh... We got the West Hair Scramble Series. It's a regional hair scramble series on the West Coast. Um, used to be a national series, and then uh, GNCC took the national title on the uh, East Coast. But um, we still run it like a national series. It's all pretty much the same. It just doesn't say national. So we, we go out pretty far. I try to keep it kind of regional in the uh, that kind of like Northern California region. But uh, a lot of it, you know, like we have our East Coast, West Coast shootout, which happened for the first time last year. It goes to Oklahoma. Um, which is awesome. So still water Oklahoma, it's out of the air and that riding is amazing. But, um, yeah, that's kind of it. It's a, it's a loop race. So you basically do as many loops as you can in a certain time period. So if you're a pro class, it's two and a half hours and, uh, and that's off the leader. So you keep doing it and the course can be anywhere. I've seen them from like 15 miles long to, um, 33 mile long course. Okay. Now, back to that East-West shootout, is that meant to be um, the West Coast guys against the GNCC guys? Is that what you're kind of setting up there? There is actually another regional series just like us on the East Coast, and it's called the okay. uh, East Hair Scrambles, and that's those riders sanctioning with us. I would love to have GNCC on there. I just don't think that's going to happen. Um, and they are uh, – we kind of just started working together with the EHS club or, uh, series, and uh, we found a middle grounds in Stillwater, Oklahoma – and it's at the uh, Stillwater 500 area. And we have another series that basically hosts that round for us. And it's um, uh, OHSCS, Oklahoma something state championship series, uh, something like that. 
and uh, they they host the round out of there, and uh, they agreed to do it again for us 2019. And the riding out there, if you've ever done it, is amazing. It's that red clay, but like kind of loamy type thing. So it's like I did my XR 650R through it, and it was hooking up. <laughs> no problem. Maybe that's the bike for the series, huh? Definitely not. But do you know what? <laughs> it was. I was thinking about it out there. I'm like, man, I should sign up and race it on the 650. It was super tight and like turny, like a hair scramble should be through the trees. But the dirt was so good, it just really like you could just lean into the berms out there, and it's all like that loamy berm stuff. Cool. So the the best the best riders from the east and the west are going to converge in Stillwater at the end of yep. August. Very interesting. Okay. Uh, so we're tentatively looking at eight rounds this year. Is that correct? That is correct. So um, we kind of, I know we, if you're hearing this now, guess what? You get to hear new information right off the bat. Breaking um, we, news. Had, we had one round uh, kind of cancel on us towards the end there. And unfortunately it's Oregon. And uh-huh. um, yeah, I know you wanted to do that because you live in Oregon. Um, <laughs> and I don't want to do it because the riding looks amazing, but um, they just don't feel the lands there yet, but they're working really hard on the land to where we can, stage out of it it's just the staging area isn't quite there yet but they're working to do it in 2020 and the club's really they're really nice people from talking to them uh, they really want to do it it's just the land so um so hopefully we can put it together for 2020 and have an oregon round because i i really want to hair scramble in oregon again we really haven't had one since the uh the funky chicken so but that will be replaced with the um, Sailor Creek, Idaho round is what we're looking at right now. It's not 100% confirmed, but if you're listening to this, it's kind of where we're leaning. And uh, we should get that confirmed here on uh, the night on Wednesday. And then we'll put out our final um, final schedule. And you get to see we're going to go back to Idaho because a lot of people wanted to go back to Idaho uh, this year, too. So that's in there. Great riding in Idaho. Bummed about Oregon and the the uh, the area he's talking about is Jacksonville or or Medford, Oregon. Really, really killer woods riding there. Hopefully, we'll see that on the schedule in 2020. And you're right, we haven't had a race here since since the Funky Chicken, which is another kind of sad to see it go. Great venue yeah. too, but um, Jacksonville definitely deserves a national. That's a great place to ride. Yeah, for sure. And you know, we drive right by it. We go to Washington, so why not have it there? Yeah, you guys are you guys are going to race in Bellingham, correct? Yes, and that is like. I want to say the most like true woods racing tight. I think it's the tightest course. Like you are zigzagging through those trees like crazy. It's fun. It's like you're turning, like you got to be good at turning through trees there, man. I tell you what, I, I rode it on my 450 and I'm more of a desert racer. I'm like, wow. But, uh, you know, a lot of times there's virgin stuff in there. It's just a fun time. I remember Max Gersten, he did it and he loved it there because he's like, this is, and he races desert too, lives in Arizona, but he's like, this is like what it should be. This is a hair scramble series. So it's really cool for him to do that. We also have lots of other woods racing, but that one I think is the tightest. Yeah. The true, the true PNW riding, but it's good that you've got a series with a lot of variety too. That helps. Looks like you're going to kick off the series at Hangtown in a couple weeks. Is that correct? That is correct. So we'll be doing it out of a uh, Hangtown at Prairie city OHV. Um, we could do ride by the, uh, the Hangtown motocross track. And um, we kind of got some, there's some cool little stuff on the backside that's a little moto And then um, we got some stuff as you get closer to the park. But yeah, it's a lot. Um, that one, it kind of rains out sometimes, sometimes a mud event, but it's, it gets a big turnout. That one gets a pretty, like, I think the biggest turnout we usually see all year is there. Really? Yeah, I did. I did see a video of this particular round a couple years ago and it was, it was a little bit snotty, but for those of us who live in the Pacific Northwest, um, probably can adapt to that one pretty easy. I also noticed here in the flyer, Two thousand dollar pro purse, five hundred dollar pro women's purse for that event. Yep. So, uh, you know, if you're if you're kind of feeling froggy, maybe go down there and get some cash. Definitely, yeah. They're all for that women's pro class. They actually have District Thirty. So we were kind of talking about District Thirty Seven and the National Hair and Hounds. Like the equivalent for our hair scramble series is District Thirty Six because we have um, three rounds with them up in uh, different areas of Northern California. Yeah. So I I did want to ask you about that that round that Willsieville. Mm-hmm. I've seen a lot of videos, never ridden there. That looks like an, um, another amazing place to ride too. Am I way off base or is that correct? It is awesome. Uh, that one has, like, I loved it there, especially because we do it in fall time. So the trees look amazing. <laughs> like they look really cool up there and you're in the deep woods and there's like all these cool Creek crossings and uh, river crossings. And then you're in the trees. It's a fun time. I really like it there. I'm, I'm pretty wide 
type rider, though. I like all sorts of racing and stuff, but uh, it, it's fun. A lot of people like it up in Willsieville. Yeah, you guys are making it tough on me between these and the Heron Hounds. I can't go yeah. to all of them, but um, yeah. shoot, I'm going to have to pick out a few. Back to the format. Again, these are, um, I don't want to call them short course, but like you said, maybe 13 to 30 mile loops. Um, we talked about kind of bike setup and things that you might need uh, for Heron Hound races. Is it is it much different for these uh, Western hair scrambles? Do we need larger tanks or anything like that? What do you think? Um, you can do it without a large tank because you're usually coming in so much, but it, it's mm-hmm. definitely not to your advantage because you want to have as much fuel so you don't have to fit as much. Um, like the women's A class, they typically run for an hour and a half long, and uh, one of the our women's champion in that, she's a women's A rider. She did it with a stock KTM tank and rarely had to fill up. And uh, so that, that was Sharon Mal, um, but she'll we'll have that women's pro class in the West Hair Scramble series too. That's going to be new for next year. Awesome. So uh, for this year, um, starts are they oh, dead engine? Go ahead. Bike set wise, sorry, yeah. uh, kind of got in there. Uh, the skid, yeah, you want to run skid plate. Um, I would definitely recommend a, a larger tank with the quick fill. So when you're coming in pitting, you don't have to worry about it um 18 inch rear wheel helps really take up any square edges or roots and stuff like that or rocks if we do hit any and then uh running bibs is always good because you can soak it up if not run like a kenda ultra uh duty tube and you'll be fine you'll just kind of hit like tubes you know you just kind of bounce off rocks a little more but it's not too big of an issue in the hair scrambles um and then typically the like recommended tire there would be like the kenda uh, washugal tire Sure, something kind of intermediate, but again, you've got a wide variety of races, so who knows? You may have to go a little bit softer, or you may have to yep. go hard terrain too. Um, yeah. Something I was going to ask, just just for the people that haven't been to these, are these dead engine or live engine starts at the hair scramble? So, at the hair scramble series, it's all dead engine, um, except for the the Pee Wee class or a 50 cc class for the kids. That is a live engine for that, but while everything else will be um, dead engine start. Okay. And I asked this about the National Heron Hound, but do we need to be AMA members? Yes, so it is an AMA sanctioned series, so you need to be an AMA member. Um, and like I said, we have the uh, the day passes, so it's like around twenty dollars for a day pass, and then fifty dollars for a um, all year long pass. Yeah, you um, might as well you might as well buy the support the AMA by the full year. Yes. Exactly. Uh, it really is a good cause keeping land open, and also it's kind of like helps you out as a rider. If you have a protest or anything, you have a higher power to go to. If the on-site race referee didn't agree to his ruling, you have something else to go to. And it, I don't know if everybody takes a look at this, but when you uh, become a member of the AMA, it actually comes with quite a few benefits. If you mm-hmm. kind of go into the finer details, there's a lot of perks. You can save on hotels, car rentals, roadside assistance. There's a lot of things that that roll out in that $50 annual membership. So it's worth yeah, looking a lot, at. People, a lot of people that get the membership, they get that uh, AAA uh, deal too on there. So that's another really added uh, benefit to have the AMA roadside assistance. Yeah. Cause who hasn't traveled, you know, 600 miles to a race and, and had their vehicle <laughs> break down at some point. So you never know. Yep. Uh, something I did, I didn't ask about the NHHA that I want to ask about the Western hair scrambles. Cause I've seen this kind of, uh, change over the years if we show up to western hair scrambles do we need specific color of background specific number or what's the setup with that yes yeah, so there is a numbering system i'm glad you brought this up um so there is a numbering system we have it on our website so if you go on our website you can see the the different numbering systems uh we do have temp numbers we sell on site they're only ten dollars yeah. it's all three it's good for one event um they're just basic white black uh background type thing um and they're good for one event, and then we you also need a transponder. Uh, that's ten dollars, and it goes under your visor, and it's good for any series that runs Moto Tally, and uh, which is a lot of them. And then, um, yeah, so that's what you need to follow. If you don't, there are penalties. But uh, what is cool though is our numbering system goes over to um, the National Hair and Hounds too. So if you request, if you want to do both series and you request your number for both, you can run that same numbering. Oh, yeah. I, I wanted to ask about Moto Tally. So that's pretty much premier scoring system out there. How yep. long does it take for you to turn around the results so people can check them out online? Well, what's really cool is uh, most of the time we can do this live now. So you can see it as the race is going, who's winning the race, who's in the lead, and uh, lap times as the race is going. And then if we do run it live, which is most of the time lately, um, 
then it'll just immediately upload. So you'll see the results right then and there. Okay. And then typically what we do is that night we just um, we total the points. You know, as soon as the race is over, the last person crossed the finish line, uh, Carly's our scoring girl. She'll just uh, hit the total points and then finish it out, and um, it's done right then and there. And you can, on your way home, just pop open your phone and, you know, put in the website and see your results and your current point standings. Very cool. And for those of you who haven't ridden or, ra- or I should say raced with transponder or live scoring like that, it'll uh, – It'll push you. You can see who you can see who's ahead of you and how far they're ahead of you. Exactly. Kind of another, yes. another angle. <laughs> right. So typically, unless it's like bad weather, we try to run monitors and you can see the, the your timing and stuff. And uh, yeah, it's really cool. And especially your pit crew, if it's live, they can sit there on their phone and kind of see the different lap times. And be like, you really need to pick it up. If you want to beat that guy in your class. <laughs> so I'm, I'm looking at your schedule. Everything's two day. I'm under the assumption that it kind of rolls out like NHHA. Whereas, you know, you have juniors and maybe even um, obviously the kids, maybe even some of the amateurs or beginners race on Saturday. And we're looking at experts and pros and and, uh, you know, open class amateurs on Sunday. Is that right? Yeah. So typically um, all the kids race Saturday. And uh, if we have quads out event, we'll run them Saturday, too. Um, Also, uh, if there's like a vintage class or something, it'll be Saturday. Um, And then on Sunday is all the big bikes pretty much so it's all the sea riders and then um the pro race so it's two separate races if you run novice or if you run any of the women's classes you will be an hour and a half long roughly if okay. you run um at least an hour and a half i should say and then if you run the pro class it's usually uh two and a half hours okay um you know i think a lot of us have heard about work series AMA Big Six, GNCC. How do mm-hmm. how does the Western Hair Scrambles kind of um, differ from from those particular series? So, well, we really the big thing, and especially where I stand in, in is we support real off road. We're not about making you do motocross track, and you know we may throw one in there. Like at Gorman, we have a motocross track, but um, really it it goes around real off roads. So like Big Six, typically it's like um, like uh or works it's kind of like tractored out double wide which i don't i don't like it when humans interact with the trail i guess you could say i like it when it's just the dirt bike out there so we try to utilize a lot of single track a lot of that type of stuff fresh train virgin so never ridden on before um and we're all about real off-road in both of our series okay and uh compared to gncc um it's very similar to that I would say it's, you know, the West coast version of that. It's not as muddy, man. I've been to some GNCCs and it gets <laughs> muddy and you ride your bike for like 15 minutes and you got to spend an hour washing it. Uh, so here it's, it's a lot, it's not that bad. And if there is mud, it's really easy to clean compared to like East coast mud where it just packs into your bike and you're done. So it's, it's a lot easier on your bike. Yeah. The West coast is pretty forgiving on our bikes. We got it pretty good back here. Hey, if you had to, if you had to choose, a round to go to which one would you circle on your calendar if you could only go to one? Oh man if i only could go to one i really have to say after going to the oklahoma one that that's probably my favorite i'm sorry all the clubs i mean not it's not all the clubs do an amazing job and all the courses are truly different so it's really hard to pick from but um me being a west coast rider and never and even an east coast rider not seeing that type of dirt it's really cool. Like it's just the dirt really grabs your tire and it's fun. It's super fun and flowy. Like the people who didn't go to that round last year really missed out. It's a really cool round. So I really want to push for people to, to make the drive. Cause I tell you what, that course is way worth it. Hmm. Interesting. We'll have to take a hard look but at that one too. If you're a pro, I do want to highlight this round because it's coming up and Mike Johns, our promoter, uh, basically he's the, promoter for that event he's also the uh the kind of acts as the club for us um it is the prescott round two in uh, prescott yeah and that will be like the premier um event of the town so it's like the town's event for prescott valley is that race and it has a thirty thousand dollar pro purse holy smokes yeah again guys pro purse 30 grand yeah (laughs) so last year it was 10 grand and we saw a lot of pros roll out this year, 30 grand, and it's huge. Like, I know they had a commercial for it last year, and they had the, the guy who does Supercross, that voice. 
Yeah. Yeah, they had that guy make the commercial for it. It's really cool. Like, that event's going to be huge. It's all out of town. It's right out of town. So, like, the hotels are right there. That's a really cool one to go to. Like, that's right up there with Oklahoma. It's going to be a huge event. And the pros, that, like, even if you just want to go watch that, pro racing is going to be huge. Hmm. That's a quick flight for me. You might have to check that out. Yeah. Um, six. You had six different winners in the pro class last year. Speaking of the um, the pros. One guy local to Oregon here, Devin Bolin, he raced the whole series, and you really had a pretty competitive series. Kind of oh, went yeah. down there, down there to the end. Do you expect a lot of these same guys to return? I mean, you're you're around here with a thirty thousand dollar pro purse. I expect that thing to be stacked. But do you expect mm-hmm. another good pro field this year? I definitely do. I know there's people who are out there for blood, like they're wanting to come back <laughs> and take that thing um, because. Last this last year, the end, the last round, man, that was crazy because Tristan Hart was in the points lead and he was like going to win it. But there was a possibility that either Max Gersten or Dante Oliveria had to win. And if either of those guys won it, basically, they could have won the championship. And that race was at Donner and it got pretty silty to the point where like, uh, people's air filters were getting clogged and like <laughs> bikes were blown up and stuff. So like, cause those guys push it like that didn't happen with the amateurs and stuff, but like those pros were pushing so hard. And I know Dante, man, he was riding like an animal. He was coming from the back of the pack and like pushed it so hard. And, um, like on the last lap, he was actually Cody Webb was in the lead and Cody Webb was kind of like the spoiler. Cause he doesn't follow the series, but he was like, like if he won it, then, uh, Tristan Hart won the championship for sure. And uh, Cody was leading it the whole time. And then uh, right there at the end, um, Dante was kind of like pulling in Cody a little bit. And then his bike blew up. And it was uh, really sad. And Dante was really mad about it. But that, man, that race, I was like, wow, I was getting goosebumps. Like all the pros lined up for that one because I knew it was on the line. A little bit of drama to close out the series. And that that Donner course, that was gnarly. Holy smokes. (laughs) Yeah, Donner, uh, as Brian Garahan, who was our director last year, I'll be the director uh, taking over from now, but um, he he likes to say carnage is like the saying for Donner. But yeah, it is, uh, it's pretty chaotic, but it's really fun. Like, I'm into that technical stuff, so that's kind of more my type of course. Right on. Hey, I was kind of looking at this flyer here, and, and it brought up a couple more things that we um, should probably ask about. Are, are you guys doing a sound test at every round, and do we need spark arresters and OHV stickers? So spark arresters are pretty much required at every round. Um, there are, like, certain areas, like when we go to Arizona, you typically don't need the um, the uh, green sticker, but it will say per flyer. Like, um, for example, Hangtown is at an OHV area, so you need the sticker there, but, like... Uh, like, uh, let's see, we do have some private property ones, like the Washington Toasted Hair Scramble is all on private property, and same with the Oklahoma round, and um, there's, like, Wilseyville and stuff like that. There's a lot of rounds where we just do it on private property, but, like, Gorman, Hangtown, um, Shasta, where it's the OHV stuff, you, you definitely need the green sticker there and a spark arrester. Okay. Yeah, and you know what? For the most part, you know the uh, the spark arresters don't really hamper the uh, these bikes like they used to. So best bet, get your bike legal and show up to some of these events. Uh, Want to talk about some of your sponsors? I noticed on the flyer here, Bell handing out whole shot awards. That's cool. Who else you got helping you out with the uh, Western Hair Scrambles this year? Uh, so the Western Hair Scrambles, we have Kenda and SRT. They're our huge title sponsors. They always uh, do a good job at helping us out. Um, and especially like giving free product and uh and they're really there to help the racers and they do a lot of uh off-road oriented stuff um and then we also have uh, mojo motorsport which is based out of no- norcal and they do all the like hard parts and accessories type thing and they're really cool they just like came out with an energy drink and uh oh, wow. our present sponsor and uh nathan burt he uh owns that company he's a really awesome dude um and then brett sage also in there so it's really cool to um to see that, um, that they're helping out. Uh, but like you said, we have bell that steps in and helps for that. Um, bolts, uh, DDC racing, which is based out of Reno. They make the best rocket out there. Like that thing will last you all year long. No doubt without like I'm running on my 650 and it lasted the whole 24 hours of Glen Helen and Vegas to Reno. And I haven't changed that rocket out. So 
really tough stuff. Um, and then, you know, we got our other sponsors in there too, like Mika Metals and uh, Twin Air um, that have stepped in and helped out. And there's like Beta. Beta Racing also jumps in and helps out and uh, sponsors a series. So, yeah, we got a few different sponsors in line for that. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, so again, the series gets underway January 19th and mm-hmm. 20th back at Hangtown, the, the, the famous or the infamous motocross track. I want to thank you for, again, donating some of your time and talking to us about the Western Hair Scrambles. I got another question for you. I, I'm guessing the answer is yes, but do you follow Supercross much? I do. So who do you, who do you got this weekend? You know, it's funny because I haven't been able to watch it as much as I'd like to. Um, I'm a bit, I don't even know if he's racing. <laughs> I guess I should probably check that, but Tomac is usually okay. my guy. Um, I used to really be a Canard fan and, uh, he kind of dropped out, which <laughs> sucks, but, uh, I, I should kind of pick some riders, but, um, I'm always a big fan of Zach Osborne too. I actually, um, got to film him down here. There's like, there used to be a like cool little secret test track and, uh, it's, a housing track now but uh he was there and that guy can ride sand tracks like no tomorrow that guy is like unbelievable so i'm always a big zach osborne fan he's also got like the funniest sense of humor i think so um he's a cool guy that time in europe probably didn't hurt his sand skills i would imagine but yeah tomac's my guy that's who i'm pulling for this weekend unfortunately zach broke his collarbone he's gonna be out for a few weeks (laughs) but Always stoked about A1. I'm playing the fantasy Supercross and everything, so really looking forward to that. Yeah. Um, but, so, yeah, I get to hopefully try to watch that this weekend. <laughs> got to watch it. You got to watch it. I know yeah. you're, you're busy. You got two series. I'm sure you're getting, you know, hundreds of emails a day, talking to sponsors. Oh. You got to roll your schedule out. So uh, hats, yeah. off, hats off to you, man, taking the bull by the horns. <laughs> You and your they, team. I wouldn't be able to do without my team, like Meg, are you right? She's my right-hand woman. Uh, we all work constantly on this stuff day and night for me there's like no days off it's usually no matter like i was answering emails on christmas so (laughs) so it happens and it's like never ending all right well again i know you're busy i really appreciate the time hope you guys have a killer series i'm sure i will i'll see you out there and i'll have to introduce myself this year but um oh one more thing how do how do we find you so if you go to westhairscramble.com is where you see our stuff. You want to go on the getting started page if you've never done this before and go try it out. It's a fun time. Um, there's classes for everyone in there. And like I said, for the, the national hair and hounds too, it's a really laid back environment. It's not that uptight, like motocross feel. Everyone will help each other out. Everyone's super nice. It's a good time. Um, and then also you can check out our Instagram page at AMA WHS. And, uh, you'll see, um, we pride on yourself by the way, being like, between both of our series, like the number one in social media live updates. Like you can pretty much watch our races live on social media. And we have an amazing social media person, uh, Kaylee Porter, who does an amazing job on site and uh, getting the updates so you can see that. Um, And then also, if you want to see the recap videos that I make, you can go to, uh, on YouTube, you can go to uh, NHHA Racing um, and you can see both the National Hair and Hounds and the West Hair Scrambles. And the West Hair Scramble series, I make both a pro recap video and an amateur recap, which covers all the youth and amateur racers there. Yeah, and that that uh, those updates you guys do on Saturday and Sunday, Facebook Live, Instagram, whatever, um, that doesn't go unnoticed. I, I'll take a peek at those things to see how people I know are doing out there. So it's really cool that you guys do that. Don't see a lot of that from anybody else. So I actually really appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, it's a big team effort for them. We really push for it because really, you know, no West Coast series really has, a, besides motocross, has televised. So we try to do the next best thing, and that's right in your phone and social yeah. media. All right, Jacob, want to thank you. I don't want to keep you any longer. Really appreciate you coming and talking to us. And again, I hope you have two great successful series this season. Awesome. And if you ever want me back on, I'm always happy to join. Yeah, we'll ha- maybe we'll check in with you mid-season. Yeah, that'd be cool. That's that's my break, so I got plenty of time there. Ah. <laughs> All right. Cool. All right, hey, thanks. thanks. Thanks, man. Have a great weekend. All right, you too. You have a good one. Let me know and if I'll... you need anything or questions or anything. There you have it. Westhairscramble.com at AMAWHS on Instagram. Jacob, thanks again for coming on, dedicating some of your time and talking to us all about your West Hair Scramble series, eight rounds in 2019. Five different states. Speaking from experience, I've done a couple of these. They're great events. 
super competitive, but super relaxed. Uh, you know, you, you can't go wrong. And I know they've got a couple new uh, new venues, new clubs hosting events in 2019. So looks like a very promising schedule, and I'm excited to, to see how that rolls out. Jacob, thank you for dedicating your time, and I want to throw a plug out to your team. You know, we talked a lot uh, off the mic, if you will, and you talked about your team a lot. Promoted events, kind of a, a thankless deal, but it's, it's cool that you've got a, a good group of people behind you working with you and, and helping you improve both these series. So I just want to throw a shout out to them. So my idea about going to Wolseyville and then going to the LA Barstow to Vegas two-day dual sport ride, I think that's, that can be a reality. That's going to be a reality. Wolseyville is November 23rd and 24th. LA Barstow to Vegas should be after Thanksgiving, so I can go race the 24th in Wolseyville and then uh, you know spend Thanksgiving somewhere in SoCal and then ultimately head off and ride LA Barstow to Vegas and then then maybe we spend two or three days in Vegas. I think that's probably a great way to uh, to roll off into December. So stamp it. That's what I'm going to do end of November this year. Really looking forward to it. BenMotorcycleMeasures.com. You guys know the drill. You know the site. You can visit our blog, listen to any of our previous podcasts, check out the written content. If you're looking for an off-road, dual sport, or motorcycle adventure, I'm your guy. We've got the best tours going in the United States. So you want to check that out. Feel free. Uh, next episode will be out on Monday. I'm not sure exactly which day that is. Uh, but yeah, we're going to talk to Los Panamericanos on Monday. Easily one of the funniest, probably, no, this is the funniest podcast I've recorded. These are two guys from Colorado that rode up to Prudhoe Bay, Alaska, and then rode all the way down to uh, Argentina. So basically, uh, well, it was a hell of a ride, right? But anyway, these guys are they're awesome. They have a great sense of humor. Talked a little bit about life, a lot about uh, you know time, time on their bikes. I think the trip was about five months long. So this is a podcast you do not want to miss, and it is coming out on Monday. Until then, I'll see you guys. Thanks for listening.